folks uh welcome to a special uh out of order book club i don't think we have any specific point where this is taking place because well it's episode 69 and it's not horny enough so we need to make up the deficit you're welcome hey 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 you're welcome don't yeah. asmr into the microphone we've got jake <laughs> editing this yeah jake is don't, not going to handle do that. that to our boy <laughs> Listen, I've always said you can't spell ASMR without ASMR. Wait, strike that, reverse it. Don't worry about That's... it. Oh, God. you're. <laughs> Look, words go in order in some way, and I have a degree that says that. Yes. Annie has a master's degree in the words. <laughs> in the words be good. <laughs> and make word good go. Uh, so we have a, we have a couple for you here today. This is a celebration of episode sixty nine. It's a it, it's it's a whammy, nice. folks. No one said nice, nice. after I said sixty nine. I'm very disappointed. Nice. 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 I had a mouthful of quesadilla avocado. I still expect a nice Rio. More like that. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Let's get going. So here we are at book club. Well, here we are at a book club drawn without reference material, apparently. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I, I felt like today, for some reason, it was a special book club, so I did bring three sections that I would like us to read. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. God. <laughs> Whose shit was that? It was fine. That was that was Elviva <laughs> dropping all of her stuff Finn, in excitement. Are you okay? Did you say three book clubs? <laughs> you were yes. So, we'll did have... you drop the snacks, Elviva? I might have dropped the snacks. Oh, should have just had Finn it's carry the snacks. Floor snacks. <laughs> you know, just pick it up really quickly. Five yeah, second rule. Five second rule. Does that apply to liquids? Yes. Hmm. I don't see why not. I'm not licking anything up from the floor. Do we have some straws? Cacophony. What, yes. What books did we have? Well, first on the matter is, a, is something called Kill Game, subtitle Seven of Spades by Cordelia Kingsbridge. Oh shit, I've actually read this one. It's good. <laughs> Ooh, nice. <laughs> that was Kit the person, not... not, <laughs> not <laughs> Ostensibly, Veli read this. Since the Veli also read this. Yeah, Veli, Veli is going to be the only one who read the actual plot of this book, Excellent. and not the smut parts. <laughs> Just, this is Mac to the side. This is a uh, book that uh, Saturn sent us. Apparently you have um, good again, taste. It's Kill Game, Seven of Spades by Cordelia Kingsbridge. King, uh, Kingsbridge. One, one of these days you guys are going to announce a title, I'm going to have to be like, fuck, that's one of mine. <laughs> oh, I can make that happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> no one said it had to be published work. God damn it, Rio. Anyway, uh, so I have selected something from this, and I am ready to read this when all of you are. Are we ready? Yeah, let's go. Yes, yes, yes. I wonder if this is the one I think it is. There's really only one good sex scene in this movie. The other one's just very bad sex. In not, like, badly written, but he, like, sex the guy did not enjoy. In this movie? In this, in, what, in this book? <laughs> you doing okay? Dominic asked. His voice was strained. Levi nodded without lifting his head. Then Dominic started moving, not thrusting, just rocking back and forth, and Levi had to lift his head so he could suck in a lungful of air as his nervous system went haywire. Oh my god, he said, because there were only words he could remember right now. Oh my god. More like this? Levi answered with a sobbing moan. Hmm. Dominic ground his hips against Levi's ass, his cock pressing up against every inch of Levi's hole in slow circles. Though it was still a snug fit, Levi's body was no longer putting up the fight it had before. His muscles rippled greedily around Dominic's shaft, begging for more without him having to say a word. Yes, yeah, Jill? I can see that. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do y yes, Artie? <laughs> no, just the oh, boy. What? What was the oh, boy? No, don't worry about it. What you've never Dominic had? was between his legs, his <laughs> knees holding Levi's apart. 
Levi shifted. Uh, this is not, haven't we had several Levi's in these books so far? I feel like I feel every like male protagonist is Levi's. Levi. Do you think it's the same Levi, or it's like the same Levi in different universes? Multi-book fucker. Oh, I hope it's the same Levi in different universes. I think a lot of them are like a type of pants, as opposed to like... Levi on intimate universe. Yeah, there's that one guy yeah. that just that that one guy that makes really popular pants. Just Levi. Yeah. I think he's like a I think he's like a halfling <laughs> or something. Ah, maybe. Levi shifted to hook his feet over Dominic's ankles, which both opened him up further and provided a point of leverage for what he wanted next. Fuck me, he said breathlessly. Come on, do it. Like he's daring him. I dare you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the so the thing is, is that um, previously Levi has only dated like guys who are his size or smaller. He hasn't really dated larger dudes because uh, he was the victim of a gay bashing in college, and that made him like terrified of being around guys who are bigger and more powerful than he is. And this is Levi coming to the realization that with a guy he trusts, like Dominic, he's actually a huge size queen. Oh, okay. Ar- Arturo's face when you mentioned gay. Gay gangbang. He's just a horrified. <laughs> not, not a, not no, a gay bashed. Ga- not a gangbang. <laughs> gay bashed. Gay bashed. Okay. No, no. Yeah. The, violent, the violent crime kind. Yeah. The violent crime where he, 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 you know, got beat up outside a bar. Not the consensual fucking kind. Not not the consensual fucking gangbang kind. I must have been to a different type of bash. <laughs> Very different. Oh, Dominic boy. rubbed the spot where his cock was buried bash. to the hilt in Levi's body. What do you call this? Fucking magnificent is fucking magnificent. <laughs> fucking magnificent, magnificent is what Levi called it. Magnificent. But it wasn't Type enough. Type in the group Type- chat. Now you done fucked up. <laughs> fucking <laughs> magnificent is like a sex wizard, I think. Yeah. The mighty, the mighty and well-renowned <laughs> fucking, fucking magnificent. That's what I call my cat. I went to one of his parties <laughs> once. You know what I mean? Fuck me for real, Dominic. Come on, please. He shoved his ass back on Dominic as he spoke, and he never knew if it was that or the pleas or both that spurred Dominic into action. Fucking <laughs> it didn't matter anyway, because the moment Dominic started thrusting, every other thought in Levi's brain just vaporized. The first few strokes felt careful, assessing, but when Levi's body took them without resistance, Dominic sped up until he was snapping his hips hard and fast. Crying out in ecstasy, Levi rolled his own hips, meeting Dominic thrust for thrust. The brisk slap of flesh against flesh echoed in his ears and turned him on even more. Brisk. (laughs) Like, like just light and breezy. Brisk, though. (laughs) Brisk. I mean, that's a way to start out, but... You just feel a bit of a chill. You're going just a to, tiny chill. to run out of steam real quick. He ended up flat on his chest, the pillows cast aside, his legs spread wide and his ass in the air, just fucking taking it. His hands clawed at the sheet, his mouth hanging open so that all his desperate moans and cries spilled forth unchecked. God, you're so loud. Dominic's hands were tied on Levi's hips as he drove into him, slamming deep on every aggressive thrust. I love that. Do you have any idea how fucking sexy it is? The pleasure was so intense that Levi's skin had broken into goosebumps all over. His scalp and toes and fingertips tingled with the chills that raced up and down his spine. Probably from that brisk wind. Mm. Uh, <laughs> how, are, how are you doing, Alviva? <laughs> how you doing, Alviva? Um, good. Checking in here. <laughs> I mean, I appreciated uh, Veli's aside. It's nice to have the context. The context is hot, you know. <laughs> we don't always get context in these. It's it's nice. Would, would you believe that most of the book is actually a, a crime thriller about a serial killer? No. Huh. Yeah. Is noise a thing, guys? Like whenever <laughs> Dominic's thick cock put pressure on his prostate, it sent an electric shock pulsing through every nerve ending, making him shriek and writhe. Literally? His own erection slapped against his belly with the force of a pounding he was getting, but he couldn't coordinate his limbs enough to reach for it. Oh, I'm no. sorry. Oh no, oh no. I'm sorry, oh, no. did you ask if noise was a thing? Huh? What? No, uh, 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 no, no the it's The electric fine. shock. It's fine. The shock I want to talk about the electric what? shock part. <laughs> it's like an eel. So, you know, it, that could actually, on a literal sense, be very useful for you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> No. Really? <laughs> magic hands. I oh, have yeah. heard of this. It's very difficult unless you have magic hands. Y- you can't go overboard, otherwise the night's just over right there. Uh, for a number of reasons, burns primary among them. But make sure they don't have piercings. Um. Yeah, that could get awkward fast. Because even <laughs> like a static shock. Oh, someone has wool socks on a carpet. Ah. Um. 
I mean, those, I'd like those to keep going, things. please. <laughs> Dominic let go of Levi's hips and leaned forward, grabbing his shoulders instead. Levi wouldn't have thought it possible for Dominic to get any deeper, but he was wrong. The new angle had his eyes rolling back in his head and his hips bucking frantically. I've got you, Dominic said. I've got you. Hang on. He pushed a hand between Levi's legs to jerk him off. Levi came immediately, his vision going wide as he let out a hoarse scream, his holes squeezing so tightly around Dominic's cock that it was almost painful. He kept gasping and squirming while Dominic milked the last of his orgasm out of him. Panting and cursing, Dominic fucked Levi in a frenzy, re-establishing his two-handed grip on Levi's shoulders. Then his hips suddenly slowed, giving Levi a few forceful, measured thrusts as he groaned brokenly through his own climax, before coming to a stop altogether. Woo! Yeah, clap. And that was Kill Game, or Seven of Spades, by Cordelia Kingsbridge, again submitted to us by Saturn. Yeah, the whole series is like five books. And it's all about murder? Yeah, it's all about a serial killer. It's about uh, various like moves forward and setbacks and catching a serial killer. The like the plot of this, the meta plot of the serial killer is over like the five books, the Seven of Spades killer. But then like each book has its own like B plot that can be resolved by the end of the book, usually having something to do with like another crime that intersects with the Seven of, Seven of Spades case a bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do they all have cock? <laughs> Yes, they all they all do have like multiple sex scenes. Interesting. Yeah. And do we have the full set in the kinky book library? I believe we do. No, we should read them. Are there all piercings? Right. Uh, I don't think there's any dick piercings in this one, though. That takes a while to heal, and if you don't, yeah, if you don't find the healer who's willing to like specialize in that area. It, and even then speeding it up kind of like hex with the piercing a bit a little bit yes yeah the, the like the the fistula or whatever you call it doesn't really form properly <laughs> fistula. is prestidigitation fun i mean depends what you use it for i can make smells i mean if it, the the cleaning function is very useful for certain things i've heard mm-hmm 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 hmm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know, maybe another mm. book could be good right now. Maybe we should want to do another book. I don't know. Wait a minute. Do you, like, do you guys want to talk about a different book? I want to talk about a different book. So if you if you do lightning from your fingers, Jill? is that like a cantrip? Jill passed Jill, out yeah. of the range of like frequencies that I can hear. Is she still talking? All I see is her mouth moving. Juliana, I believe uh, perhaps you should read this next book. The the section that we've picked. Should I? Yes, you should. I don't think I should read. I, should I read? I'm not sure I should read. I feel read. like you should read. I think you should read. Do it. Either that or practice your little this one, this one little that we elect- read. electrical shocks on my arm and uh, Artie, I will pay you money if you stop <laughs> forever. Uh, <laughs> I can't promise forever. That's what uh, I tell every everybody. One time thing. Cacophony. What are you yeah. going to give me if I read this one? A smile. No. What do you How want? But if, if if you don't read it, I'll read it. And I bet you'd find that pretty awkward. If you don't read it, I'll just keep asking you to try your electrical stingies. Oh yeah, Alviva can read it. Why don't you? Why don't you hand it over to Alviva to read? No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, but I hate that we read this book. I hate. I hate that we read this incredibly shitty book. That's fine. It, it entertained okay. us for a day or two. All right. Okay. 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 You people keep fucking quiet about this, all right? No, I don't think that's going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Especially if you mispronounce something. Or oh, is this the one with the um? Yes, the, the, yes, with it the is. Buckets. Yes. Buckets. All right. Okay, folks. Since this is a special book club, uh, this Mackenzie and I also prepared our own uh, excerpts from some of the books that we have read. So this is going to be an excerpt by from the book. Well, the book is so generous. <laughs> this is called Taken by the Orc Warrior, a steamy monster romance novella, Orc Bride's Faded Mates, book one by Tanya Anders. <laughs> I, I have talked. I'm going to be talking about this. If you're on our Patreon, I'm going to be talking about this uh, after this airs uh, in more detail on Fiction Affliction, uh, the uh 
Patreon exclusive thing Mac and I do. But oh boy, this is a shitty, shitty, terrible book. But my friend Meg and Bob told me about it. Uh, and they were like, oh, this has like an orc because we're like, oh, let's read some romance novels about orcs. Oh, here's one about uh, an orc and a priestess. And I was like, really? Mm-hmm. In case you want to know, this is going to be our mini Ficka Flick released on August 3rd. If you would like to sign up for the $3 tier solely to hear that. Which honestly, you should. Mackenzie was dying. <laughs> I have read some parts of this to Mackenzie and Rio uh, because it is just written so shitty. Uh, I have stitched together two different sex scenes in a row here. Uh, so this is going to sound a little weird, but I tried to capture as much of the mm, great writing as I could. Okay, okay, okay. Jillian is going to take a couple of deep breaths. <laughs> have some peanuts. They were only on the floor for like a little bit. Yeah, there's four peanuts. peanuts. They're okay. fine. Do you know where peanuts grow? In the dirt. Okay. Eat your dirty nuts. Eat your dirty nuts. <laughs> I mean, I've done it once or twice, but honestly, you want to wash. Uh, that's, where, that's where the prestidigitation comes in handy. Yeah, let me prestidigitate these nuts. Juliana's going to try and get into a zone here because I can't, because it's going to be really hard for me to read She's this gonna completely need to be character about her having a breakdown. <laughs> yes. Aviva's not helping and will not be able to help, let's be honest. <laughs> Are you sure you're ready to have me? Narog asked. What about your vows? I chose you over the convent, my love, I said. It was a dark and dangerous place. I continued, wanting to share my heart as well as my body with Narog before we became one. Superfluous dialogue tags. <laughs> it wasn't my destiny to be in that sinister convent. My destiny was to be with you. I love you so much, Narag said, and kissed me ardently. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the convent was evil. Yeah, it was like it was like an evil convent with like a mother superior who like put people in dungeons, but not in a sexy not way a because sexy they broke a glass way. and said they they had somebody called Satan in them. I'm not sure what that was about. I, f I feel like I've heard people talk about this Satan person before, along with Sounds that cool. Jesus person. I don't understand. Well. Is that like a space paladin Christ thing? Oh, maybe. It could be space paladin Christ. I love you so much, Narag said, and kissed me ardently. I love you too, my handsome warrior, I said, and spread my legs wider on the bed. Narag <laughs> held his enormous cock in hand and began to slide it gently through the folds of my pink soaked slit. Slit though. Uh, slit though. Slit I don't though. like the amount of sauce you put on those consonants, <laughs> Julia. <laughs> 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 that was a saucy it is, oh, it is perhaps it is perhaps oversauced. Maybe you shouldn't ask me to read things. I'm feeling like regrets. You really <laughs> sucked this this wordplay with your sauce. Gross. My thighs were spread as wide as possible, ready to receive him. The wetness between my legs worked as a natural lubricant to keep the friction at a minimum as Narag worked his way inside yes, me. Yes, that is you how, know, that, that, that is how they work. That's that is how they work. I have it on good authority. I miss the mysterious <laughs> bottle of oil. <laughs> <laughs> I do I mean, think, though, that if, if he's that big, some additional assistance would not be amiss. Oh, folks, it's literally the size of a human arm. Okay. <laughs> I, you can pick it. Size queen. You've had practice. You, see, you can pick it. You feel so good, so wet and warm, Narog said with a moan. It's just right, my love, I urged. Keep going. Take me. I don't typically tell them how warm they are. I mean, I feel like that's a given. That's a I mean, given. It's one of those things where you only point it out if it's unusual. So it's like, oh, you're cold. Like... That's that's when you Are point you, it out. That's when it's a vampire in bed. Yeah. Encouraged, Narag began to thrust, his massive cock moving rhythmically inside me. I let out a desperate cry and hooked my legs around his waist. The fact that it's in first person adds a lot. That's a weirdly, <laughs> like, small waist or long legs, give it the presumed side give difference. Give it the girth, yeah. Yeah. I marveled at his body as my hands dragged across his muscular chest and I stared deep into his glistening emerald eyes. Is he crying? I'm glistening, though. He's glistening. Emerald eyes. Oh, by the way, this is also the first time that she has actually had penis and vagina sex. Oh, I call foul. <laughs> <laughs> Red flag. I was enamored with the way he took his time with me, trying to be careful, the tame the beast inside himself so he wouldn't tear me in two. That's a visual. Ow. 
But I didn't want him to be careful. I wanted him to channel the sexual beast and take me for all I was worth. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Fuck me like you mean it, I encouraged. Hell yeah. There's too many dialogue tags. This is a nun? She has never had any sex, ever? The first, like, literally the first sexual act she did was a couple of weeks ago, uh, when she, like, gave him a hand job. And now- so, like, can she even say fuck without getting struck by lightning? Jill, can you <laughs> say fuck without getting struck by lightning? Jill, can you even say fuck? You guys have heard me say fuck all the time. It's a good point. Can you even do the fuck? Jill also loves lightning, so she'd probably embrace it if she was struck by lightning. Oh, like me? Uh, like, you just gotta uh, be careful around the piercings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed my hair and impaled me deeper with his huge cock. How is that the refuge you're taking from this conversation? <laughs> it's better than anything else that's personal. <laughs> I instinctively pressed myself against him, hugging our naked chests together as tightly as possible so we could blend into one being. Chafing, though. Our hips found a rhythm, as did our hearts. Oh, no. <laughs> For a virgin? Like, was there anything else seen before this that we we skipped? No, she gave him a hand job, and then, like, Ooh. he ate her out, and then I, I think he also jacked off on her. Damn. But that was like uh that was like a like like a week ago. A week ago. Yeah. You know this book pretty well, Joe. Yeah, you we, you know this a lot uh, very well. We read it. We read the book. Yeah. We, we read a lot of books. Pl- how <laughs> many how many times you read this book, then you? None, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hurt you, he whispered in my ear, giving me goosebumps. I want you to be rough with me, I insisted. Unleash the beast. (laughs) (laughs) I'm off the leash. Beast Wars. Uh, No, no, now say it in Canadian. Beasties. (laughs) (laughs) He smiled mischievously before pinning my wrist to the bed and increasing the urgency of his thrusts. There's too many adverbs. He began hammering in and out of me with intense lunges of his hips. When he saw the rapture on my face, he began fucking me even harder, pounding me mercilessly. Our tongues tangled fervishly as he continued to ram his mammoth shaft. As as he continued to ram his mammoth shaft into my tight pussy over and over again. Mammoth, though. He released his mouth from mine and clamped his lips around my breast, sucking my lust-hardened nipple. (laughs) A toast to Mammoth Shaft. There's just like I I feel like we're like Mammoth Shaft is very good, but I feel like we're like underserving lust hard nipple. <laughs> yeah, but I don't like that one. <laughs> Artie's just got a pursed frown on his face throughout this whole thing. Yes, Arturos. <laughs> I just it's just it's really bad, yo. It's a really <laughs> bad book, yes. And how many times did you read this? None. (laughs) I've never seen this before in my life. It's fine. I swear I saw it in your room the other day. No, you didn't. (laughs) That was a Bible. (laughs) (laughs) Why were you in my room? I I was stopping by to talk to 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 Kara. Don't, though. (laughs) (laughs) Don't talk to me or my room ever again. (laughs) Uh, let's see. Lost heart and nipple. There we go. Harder, I cried out. His cock became a blur, hammering uh. in and out of me at ferocious speed. Uh. He kissed my neck fervishly, then started to give me little bites. Is fervishly a word? Yes. Yeah. Is it though? Yes. It? I feel like it's, it's fervently, not fervishly. Uh, no, I think fervishly is a real word. I mean, it's, fervishly it's not- Fervishly is not a real word, Let's actually. look at the dictionary. I I have, yeah I pulled up I actually pulled it up it said it, it says it's at least spelled wrong I feel like it's fervently then started to give me little bites he impaled he all right I want I want to just really just enjoy this next couple of sentences he impaled my eager hole as hard as he could with his giant rod Ew. he was thundering inside me his rock hard cock spearing me again and again and again now does he have lightning magical properties no no Giant i think rod, it, though. I, I think his dick's just big i don't like the eager hole no <laughs> no no neither do i 
I think hole is one of my least favorite smut Hole is not words. a real sexy word. No, not really. I can't hold it, I implored, turning my head to look into his intense, mossy eyes. I don't want you to, he replied. Can't hold it. Is she good? No. no. I thought we That's had a rule against say. no piss cake in this. That's what you say when you got the pee. Yeah. My pussy, my clit, my nipple, my mouth. They were all being stimulated at the same time. Oh, that's a lot of coordination. It was all too much. I was overcome with a thunderous, shuddering orgasm that took the very breath out of me. A flood of bliss radiated out from my from my <laughs> pussy across my entire body. Radiant so is that like Radiant. Yeah. Is that like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time? Probably, right? Thunderous, Probably. huh? I can do it. Thunderous, apparently. I'm literally doing it right now. <laughs> We're all very proud of you. But I did it. <laughs> Good job. You did it. Now, are you patting your head? Because you do need to give yourself a pat on the head. I, I was patting my head. I did stop. Okay. A uh, flood of bliss, etc., etc. Narag followed suit. He gave one more almighty thrust with his hips and then groaned loudly as he released an explosion of cum inside my pussy. An explosion, though. An explosion. Oh, explosion. Though. Are you guys ready for this part? Because this ready. author has a fetish. No. Oh. No. Uh, I can feel ready. the head of his cock pulsing. Cul 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 <laughs> cul 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 <laughs> I can feel the you head of his cock. <laughs> I could feel the head of his cock pulsing and spasming as it released a tidal wave of his seed. Oof. It kept coming and coming. Oh no, a, a tidal wave. That's going to take so long to clean up. He gently slipped himself out, out of me and his sea of cum escaped my vagina and ran in hot rivulets down my legs. Why are we they using oceanic metaphors for this shit? There was so much of it that a puddle was forming on the floor. I see why prestidigitation is a thing. Narag was breathing heavily. His cock was still erect, and cum continued to spurt from the tip. It... I was still in heat, and he and didn't want to waste a drop of his sweet juice. His Ugh. sweet life juice. Don't miss a word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but how many times have you read this? Uh, anyway, what comes next? <laughs> I didn't want to waste a drop of his sweet life juice. I immediately went down on my knees, not caring that there was a puddle of his cum on the floor. I grabbed his shaft and guided the tip towards my mouth. I lapped it up like a greedy cat who got the cream. I licked up every last drop of the warm and tasty cum. Oh, God. Afterwards, Narag lifted me and placed me gently on the bed. I'll get some water so you can clean up, he said. Don't, I replied. Oh. Just lay here with me. No. I want to have you on my skin. I want all of you with oh. all of me. Always. <laughs> They're going to get glued together. They're in the puddle <laughs> of cum. Like if they were on the bed, so there's so much that it dripped down off the bed and formed a new puddle, which means that the, the bed is... Go oh, oh. It's like a lake. <laughs> Do you guys want some context for this? What context? Yeah. Of course, Jill. Who hasn't read this book? <laughs> Ever. When, when, like, when he eats her out and then she gives him a hand job, she gets it all over her and then they cuddle to sleep. <laughs> and then she gets woken up by a nun from the other, from the convent who has come to quote unquote rescue her. Uh, and then they go back together. Then she's covered in dirt because they traveled in the woods for a day. Then she almost immediately gets thrown to the dungeon, uh, hangs out there for about a day. You know, there's like an ogre and then the, the mother superior gets like murdered by an ogre or something. Don't worry about it. Then she and Narag escape back to the woods to a different cabin, running around in the woods for a day. And then they immediately go into this. She has not had a bath in days. No. Her, her, her. She's covered. Her eyelashes should be glued together at this point. Uh -huh. It is a deeply unpleasant book to read, and I don't like it. And yet, how many and times yet I've have never you read, read this? It? <laughs> Negative five times. I have, I have, I have, I have so not read it. I haven't read it ever. I've never even heard of it. What is this book? She throws it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey now, I, I'm appreciative. Anyone who takes the time to write smutty things deserves a measure of respect, even if they write looking even like a, a greedy slut. cat who gets the cream. 
<laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What happened in the last five minutes? I wasn't here. I was somewhere else. I'm just thinking about how much cum is in the sea now. How, ma how many pubes do you think both of them ripped out when they separated in the morning? <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. It's fine. She's got a good coating of dirt oh, to protect underneath. I'm gonna and there's a layer of cum underneath the dirt. I'm gonna yeah, this is, it's like the dirt sandwich with there's cum bread. There's sediment. There's like, there are layers. You could do, you could like, you could, th you could do an excavation. I think I need the bath. Like spiritually. Before a bath, perhaps I could read the final selection please, I've chosen for this day. Please, I am so I am so tired of everyone looking at me right now. Alright. I am never tired of everybody looking Arturo at me. Arturo stares <laughs> harder at Jill. <laughs> Jill just kind of leans away from him. I am reading an excerpt from a book called Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. <laughs> <laughs> what a title. Good title. Now I have some suspicions about what this one's about. Yes, do tell. I suspect fingering's involved. Fingering is involved. I love some fingering. Uh, it's, it takes place in um, some place called like Victorian England. I don't know what that is, but it's about. So this is from Act Two of the series. Um, Act One follows Sue, uh, who is uh, an orphan raised raised by like a foster mother. Uh, and she is hired by someone named, uh, Mr. Rivers, who she calls the gentleman, who has brought her in as a lady's maid, uh, under this supposedly naive, uh, naive noble girl, uh, who he is going to try and marry so he can have access to her fortune as her husband. And her job is to just make sure that she is willing to marry him and, like, push her along. However, uh, Sue falls for, Sue falls for Maud, the, uh, the lady. But in Act 2, it's from Maud's point of view, because it turns out she was playing a scam the whole time. Uh, Gasp! It scams all the way down. Now we're getting the sex scene from Maud's point of view, as it were. And at first, it is easy. After all, this is how it's done in my uncle's books. Two girls, one wise and one unknowing. He will want, she says, to kiss you. He will want to embrace you. It is easy. I say my part, and she with a little prompting says hers. The words sink back upon their pages. It is easy. It is easy. Then she rises above me and puts her mouth to mine. Her lips are cool, smooth, damp. They fit themselves imperfectly to mine, but then grow warmer, damper. Damp. Her hair falls against my face. I cannot see her. I can only feel her and taste her. She tastes of sleep, slightly sour. Too sour. I part my lips to breathe or to swallow or perhaps to move away, but in breathing or swallowing or moving, I only seem to draw her into my mouth. Her lips part, also. Her tongue comes between them and touches mine. What is, is what it sleep hotter? taste like? Is it hotter in here? <laughs> Were those hot nuts? I feel like it got a little warm. <laughs> those are spicy nuts. Sleep tastes kind of like... Sleep is a little sour because your breath yeah, sours, sour. you know? Yeah. And at that, I shudder or quiver. For it is like the finding out of something raw, the troubling of a wound, a nerve. She feels me jolt and draws away, but slowly, slowly and unwillingly, so that our damp mouths seem to cling together, and as they part to tear, she holds herself above me. I feel the rapid beating of a heart, and suppose it is my own, but it is hers. Her breath comes fast. She has begun very lightly to tremble. Then I catch the excitement of her, the amazement of her. Do you feel it? She says. Her voice sounds strangely in the absolute darkness. Do you feel it? I do. I feel it as a falling, a dropping, a trickling like sand from a bulb of glass. Then I move and I am not dry like sand. I am wet. I am running like water, like ink. I begin like her to shake. Yeah, that makes sense. That seems like a sensible, sensible difference, difference between the beginning of the scene and then the, this part of the scene of, of, of not being dry anymore. <clears throat> yeah. Mm hmm. She kisses me again. Then she raises her hand and I feel the tips of her fingers flutter against my face. Do you see? She says, he will want, he will want to touch you. To touch me? Only touch you, she says. The flustering hand moves lower. Like this. When she pulls up, puts up my nightgown and reaches between my legs, we both grow still. Then her hand moves again. Her fingers no longer flutter. They have grown wet and slide and in sliding seam like her lips as they rub against mine to quicken and draw me, to gather me out of the darkness, out of my natural shape. I thought I longed for her before. Now I begin to feel a longing so great, so sharp, I fear it will never be assuaged. 
I think it will mount and mount and make me mad or kill me. Yet her hand moves slowly, still. She whispers, how soft you are, how warm, I want... The hand moves even slower. She begins to press. I catch my breath. That makes her hesitate and then press harder. At last she presses so hard I feel the giving of my flesh. I feel her inside me. I think I cry out. She does not hesitate now, however, but comes nearer to me and puts her hips about my thigh, then presses again. So slight she is, but her hip is sharp, her hand is blunt, she leans, she pushes, she moves her hips and hand as if in rhythm, a time, a quickening beat. She reaches, she reaches so far, she catches the life, the shuddering heart of me. Soon, I seem to be nowhere at that point at which my flesh is gripped by hers. And then, oh there, she says, just there, oh there. I am breaking, shattering, bursting out of her hand. She begins to weep. Her tears come upon my face. She puts her mouth to them. You pearl, she says as she does. Her voice is broken. You pearl. I don't know how long we lie then. She sinks beside me with her face against my hair. Cacophony, I'm worried you didn't understand the assignment. This is for bad smut. <laughs> Sorry. I had to go for a good lesbian sex scene because it's been so long. <laughs> it has been a long time since we've read anything sapphic. I got the... Yes, and I just wanted, you know, as a lesbian, I just wanted to show it to my people as, as something glorious. Yeah. I, I very, I'm very bisexual. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Us, okay. I got a. May I also recommend Fingersmith in general? It's a very good book. I gotta go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I, I, I'm gonna be in my bunk. Uh, um. <laughs> these were these were really spicy nuts. I think I need water. <laughs> Maybe like Makes a sense. shower or a bath. I don't, need to go somewhere else. Just leave the bathroom, the b bath place alone. I will just, um, I will leave Fingersmith here on the table if anybody wishes to borrow it. Dexterity I saving will throw. I'm gonna reach for I'm it. grabbing it first. I got a 19. <laughs> <laughs> Beat a 19, uh, Jill. only six. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I grab Too it and slow. run. I run. I miss the step. I teleport away. <laughs> I leave the lavender smell behind and I am Wait, gone. Wait, do you want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> Artie just yells back Read it loudly <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with my life <laughs> Well we finished book club So what's next is up to you I guess Yeah I'm gonna go somewhere that's not looking at Lockwood For a while <laughs> Everybody have a good day I'll just be in here reading Yeah Zaveli is just sat there In the wardroom <laughs> 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 Just kind of gives you a little wave and puts their hands back in their lap. Yeah. Uh, Wen casually waves back to Veli and then casually sits back and grabs a book and starts reading. Good book club, everybody. <laughs> Good book club. <laughs> that was book club for 69. Nice. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Thank you for none of you fa failing me this time. <laughs> <laughs> you failed us. You brought good smut. Uh, sorry. We have never had a lesbian sex scene in book club. Oh, God damned if I wasn't going to make it a good one. Oh, there's been so many dicks. Yeah, no, I, I continue to be very bisexual. Yeah. And... No, but real, Fingersmith is l real good. I will say uh, act one, when you're in Sarah's point of, or Sue's point of view, uh, it does seem like rape is happening, but to allay your feels, it is not. Okay, great. Not during the lesbian sex scene. I should say like, um... Maud is not into Rivers and Sue picks up on it, but it's not happening because Rivers and uh, and Maud are like working together. So they're just kind of pretending. Oh, cool. pretend having sex. No, they're not even pretend having sex. They just disappear in a room together. And then hours later, he's casually out smoking and and Maud's there. Incredible. OK, well, uh, thanks for joining us for episode for our special book club for episode 69, everyone. Nice. <laughs> Yes, thank nice. you for joining us for episode 69. Nice. 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 nice.
Jam Jammer is performed by Lexi Peppers, Annie Creighton, Kit Walker, Mackenzie Weaver, and Rio, and is edited by Jake Mason. Our character designs are by Rio, who you can find at vriosart on Twitter, and our cover art is by Canary Witch, who you can find at doodlesfromthebird.tumblr.com. Our opening and closing music is by Reckoning Storm Audio Works. For more episodes of this show and our other shows, as well as news, check out our website at crookedrussiancamp.horse. Are we doing my next, Mackenzie? Yeah, we're doing yours next. <laughs> okay. I I hope I one day someone can, like, puppet RT so that I can read. <laughs> and not in a grack voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need, you need Artie to pursue a plot where he learns to read. <laughs> it's not that he can't, it's that he won't. So Artie needs to pursue a plot where he's motivated to read. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I, I, it's, who's to say he can or cannot read? It's just that he won't.